Here he is. <laughs> the Don of Donington. Yeah. In the middle of Donington. Yeah. Where dreams are made. Your happy place. Yeah, my happy place. Where it all started. You must look around this gym, though, and just think, like, because you've grown up here, right? You've gone from a boy into a man now. What, you're 27 years old now? Yeah, 27. And you started here when you were how old? Well, I've always been here from like three, four, but I've never, I just used to watch them train then. Obviously, I wasn't training yeah. then, but from like seven, eight years old, training a couple of days a week here and there, and getting the gloves on when I could, when I was allowed. So, yeah, 20 plus years. This place has kept you on the straight and narrow. It's turned you from a, a boy to a man. I bet you've looked in that reflection, these mirrors, the same mirrors over the years and watched yourself sort of grow up. Yeah. Seen the change in them mirrors and um, made a lot of friends through this place, a lot of memories. And like I say, started here and now we're at the pinnacle, the top, and we're still here. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great place and plays a, is a close place to my heart. March 16th. That, it sounds like that IBO title's coming back here. Tell, tell us about this. What's on your mind? Yeah, 100% it's going to come back here. Some things are meant to be in life, Dev, and uh, this is definitely meant for me. I'm training hard, putting in the hard work, and counting down the, the days now. Not, we're not far away, not far out, and uh, super excited. You look in good shape as well. We, we've seen you training, doing a little bit today on the pads, hitting the bag as well. Do you feel, I mean, you're, you're massive for super bantamweight as well. Do, do you feel in a good place in your camp? Yeah, I feel super fit, super strong. And um, I don't think there's a bigger super bantamweight in the world out there than me. And I want to take full advantage of that in March. I've got Rob Les, who's the world champion. He's younger than me. He's hungrier, but not hungrier than me. And uh, it's a good test. Took the hardest fight out there again. And uh, looking to show that everything I've always said, that I'm the best that I am. What do you know about him then, this guy? Just about know his name, <laughs> to be honest. That's it. And he's Southpaw. I know he's been sparring a new way. He had a good win against a good lad in Lee McGregor. So he's probably full of confidence and... Last time he come to these shores in Scotland, he uh, he won well. So hope he ain't got too comfortable thinking that it's going to be going that way again. You you've been cut against Leach. You won the British and European. You've defended it too. It's IBO World Title next. What what would you like to show before a potential Inoue fight? Do you feel like there's still more that we need to see from Liam Davis? Yeah, definitely. People are, you're always going to have people who don't believe in you. But I think doing a statement, a big number on Rob Les in this fight, which I plan to do, is like shuts everyone's mouth kind of thing. Like no one can question who else can beat me. So, yeah, a new way would be the one after this. Or the Saudi. They, they got a big Saudi event. And uh, if Frank wants winners, then he's got a banker in me. Well, you said at the launch press conference, I want to be the best super bantamweight in the world. How far off do you really think you are? Touching distance now. I think Inoue is without question really the best. And um, I just need the opportunity to fight these guys. And that's all I'm asking for. Uh, I feel like I've earned it. I feel like I've proven I'm no walkover for anyone. As you said, I'm a big, strong... It's, it's not about just being big. I'm solid. I'm a solid super bantamweight, and um, had two fights last year, two stoppages against two good people, two good, bo very good boxers, and um, there's no limit for me. I just believe there's plenty more to come. More hungrier, the more the closer I get is making me hungrier, and these fights are going to be with me forever so I'm putting it in leaving no stone unturned leaving and going to leave with no regrets and yeah to beat the best you have to be the best and that's why I want my shot at anyway. You do seem to live your life like a 
tomorrow might, you know, today might be my last day, tomorrow might never come, I don't want to have any regrets or anything like that. Where does that come from? I've experienced it in life. We spoke about my uncle many a times and um, he's here one day and he was sadly gone the next and can happen to any of us. No one's invincible. We're, there's only one guarantee in life. We're all going to die. And as sad as that is, that's a fact. So I'm just trying to make each day the best day I can. Do you know what I mean? Spend with my loved ones, put the hard work in, in something that I've always set out to do, in becoming a world champion. And that's the only focus I've got. Crash, burn, die on the way. As, uh, as long as I'm chasing that, I die a happy man. Just a kid from Donington chasing his dream, huh? Just a kid from knee high with a dream to a grown man still chasing the same dream with all the problems and crap that comes along the way. Here I am, put a smile on my face most days, put the hard work in every day. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's worked so far. Life's good, I can't grumble. I'm happy, I've got a happy wife. I'm, I've got good family, my brother's sister, my mum, dad, I think I'm making them all proud very close friends that I spend a lot of time with and yeah I couldn't ask for much more this would just the 16th of March would just be the cherry on top of my life so far. You used to work the bins and then train in the evenings or even train while you were doing the bins as well and that was all while you were chasing the dream do you feel like you're getting closer and closer and do you look back on those moments where you were working the bins and think wow I can't believe how far I've come? Yeah I spend a lot of days reminiscing about the hard times I've been through and a lot of people have been through hard times and mine motivate me, upset me sometimes and uh, bring a ball to my throat but definitely motivate me and I'm grateful for everything that's ever happened in my life, the people i got in my life and this is me trying to give back to them, give them a better life take the struggles away from the people that have been there with me. And yeah, we are getting closer for sure. I think that's evidently shown over the last couple of years. I feel like my life has took a full U-turn since a teenager to now. And I would have never believed it probably for many years that I'd be in this position, but it's took a lot of hard work, a lot of pain, a lot of tears, and a lot of picking myself up to go again. and. Yeah, I'm proud of myself for doing so because I could have easily stepped away and been like I could have been, I should have been, and I'm actually here still chasing that, that dream that I set out to do. You grateful for the hard times? Yeah, I think they moulded me into the person I am. Good times are coming, but um, the bad times will stick with me, remain with me for the rest of my life. And Yeah, very grateful. And it's, part, it's been part of my journey. Do you know what I mean? I've, it brings a dog in me. I, um, it's not all been handouts, give outs. I started here as an amateur, my first fight in the club. Do you know what I mean? The flea pit, they used to call this place. And now we're here about to fight for a world title. So, yeah, I'm proud of myself for getting here. I'm thankful for the people that have supported me day in, day out. And... I'm going to do it for them as well as myself. You talked about this haircut being the, uh, the madman. That's what you talked about at the press conference. Has this fight, this moment in your career, brought a bit of a spite in you? Yeah. Do you know, do you know it's funny because my granddad used to say, oh, I used to ask for flash shorts or boots, you know, as a kid. And I always remember him saying to me, it's, it's not a fashion show. So... I've took the pretty boy comb over look, gone. And uh, yeah, mean business. Nothing else really matters right now in my life. Savage mode. Savage mode. 100% savage mode. That's, uh, that's bad news for the super bantamweight division there. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, especially Britain, they're all in the same division, but they're definitely not in the same league. No chance I feel like I'm the best 
in Britain and Europe, as I've shown, and now it's time to step the big step and show that um, I'm world class. You've you've talked about how obviously you've you've never been stopped, um, but is it fair to say now at this point you've actually got very heavy hands yourself, and you you could be the man to to stop Ayala, uh, Robles, perhaps to even stop Inoue. You've got these heavy hands too, Liam. I've got some great. I would just believe in myself, and. Uh, I think I hit anyone on the button, they're going to go. As well as it could happen to me, I'm, I'm not stupid or in denial. But don't let me catch you first. Trust me, don't let me catch them first because they'll be in trouble. When does the uh, the nice guy Liam Davis, because we're talking now, you, you know, you're, you're a nice guy, but when, when does he turn into a, into a bad guy? How close do you get to the fight before you switch? Yeah, avoid me, fight week. Different mentality. Different mentality. Like people, I can only be around certain people. We've got a short fuse. And I am an, I believe I am a nice guy, but I got a hot temper, short temper, like I believe everyone has. And um, I go into fight week carrying a bit of chip on my shoulder because I feel like I always got something to prove. And I understand what I'm representing, who I'm representing and what I need to do to get things for my people and it's go to war, do you know what I mean? It's them or me and I'm willing to go till death, and as sad as it is, I'm willing to go there and I haven't had to prove that yet but maybe this fight we will. The Mexicans, they're tough, they're game. I think the British have seen a bit weak and to the Mexicans, I think we're a bit soft and uh, this kid from Donington 8. Toughest fight of your career? We're going to see. Hope so. I really hope so. You want a hard, yeah, tough fight? I want it hard. I want to show people that I'm not just a good boxer. I'm this, like, come see how big my balls are. Let's go. Yeah. Feels like this one that you're really looking forward to. Yeah, this 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 is the most important one, and not for the IBO belt. This this one is just change my life. Give say this gym has had a world champion. Do you know what I mean? It's this one's bigger than me, and that's why I'm, I'm ready to go to the back to the gutter where I come from to get it. And what, what sort of fight are you expecting from him? I think he's he's going to come. Like They think we're soft. He's going to come and um, try and put it on me. I'm very clever, man. Very clever. And I think it'll suit me. Look at my southpaw fights. So every, every southpaw I fought, I dropped. So remember that, Rob Lez. Do you think people still underestimate Liam Davis despite you being unbeaten, British champion, European champion, you've got an awful lot of belts, you've got a great record, are people still underestimating you? Probably. I don't, I don't try not, I don't, I don't think about what other people think. you got Floyd Mayweather, look at him unbeaten, people still say this would have beat you or you thought Pacquiao too late. You're like, I'm not a people pleaser, I'm a fighter and a fa like family man, that's it. I don't, anyone's opinion doesn't really matter and I think when you're young you take it more on board now I just roll with the punches and what will be will be as long as my mum's happy my dad's happy the wife's happy do you know what I mean I'm, I'm gonna sleep at night happy that's that's all that matters to me all this boxing and bad talk that you get in between not just boxing any sport is become really irrelevant to me now I couldn't care Sometimes I get involved because I like to play the game, but honestly, it's nothing. Did a bit of training in Italy as well? Yeah, we went over to Italy. So I went to spa the European champion, the weight above. He's 19 and now he's undefeated. So, yeah, it was good work. It was good style. The same sort of style as Robles, I believe, Southpaw, and that's why we went. Trained hard, had a few days over there. Didn't really do much because I'm in camp. But it was good. How's this fight going to go? It's 
could, there's two ways. One way is definitely going to go is I'm going to win. 100, no doubt in my mind. I'm either going to get him early or get him late, I believe. I don't do points anymore. I'm not here to do points. You bored of points Let, now? Yeah. I want to be the most exciting fighter. Do you know what I mean? I want to, it's, I want to entertain people. And, yeah. Either I'm going to get you or you best hit the lottery if you think you're going to get me. So, I think I'll get him. I think that's generally belief. I'll get him at some point. What point, I don't know. Don't really care. But this is this is my time now. Would you want to tell him anything? This is Eric Robles here. Nothing. Good luck. Bring your best you got. Hope you're confident and... Uh, I look forward to the 16th.